Hi friends, uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and we are into our course on risk-based engineering. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is the uh, 10th module and second lecture of this on physics of failure. And in this uh, lecture, uh, we will discuss a technique uh, which is sort of widely available. Uh, only thing is it has evolved over a period of time and this technique is called uh, originally it was called failure mode and effect analysis. Later on it uh, other components also got added and today uh, what, uh, what module we have adopted of this approach is uh, failure mode, uh, mechanism, effect and criticality analysis. That means complete answer about uh, risk, about reliability and uh, starting from the material what are the mechanisms involved, degradation things. So, so, so this, uh, be, uh, this piece I would say that is failure FMM, FMMECA. Uh, it is called, uh, it is a very, uh, it, uh, this approach plays a central role in uh, physics of failure method. So let us see, uh, uh, for, for component degradation, uh, we have to understand the failure distribution uh, how the failures are get uh, rather even if we uh, take the plant specific data for conformation and all or even if we take the uh, um, experimental data on life testing and all that we have to have a uh, distribution to characterize time to failure you know and then this happens in the context of life cycle loads uh, so that is the life cycle loads and the design consideration for life, uh, life cycle operation of the com component so they together provide a fundamental basis how a component can uh, can can uh, can fail, and uh, we are able to give the time to failure of the component. Um, so uh, we have this uh, a reliability approach. So uh, we have discussed a lot about probabilistic versus POF. But again, let us uh, let me uh, let me uh, re-emphasize that even PA, POF. Uh, doesn't operate uh, in standalone mode. Uh, there are a lo lot of data uh, which are analyzed and uh, their um, time to failure using the same distribution. And uh, in physics of failure and of course in uh, prognostics and health management, the viable distribution plays a very, very important role. Be why? Because uh, uh, of course we'll see during the uh, uh, lecture also, uh, this distribution is can be termed as uh, adaptive distribution. It can accommodate exponential distribution, it can uh, reflect on normal distribution, uh, the kind of data if we have and the looking at the distribution and its parameter, it's called beta, beta parameter, we can tell our data uh, follows which distribution. So you get an idea about the distribution and especially for live test data, uh, this particular uh, that viable distribution is being used very actively and I, as I said, uh, FMEA, uh, FMECA uh, plays a central role. So in this uh, lecture, we will be discussing um, uh, or rather uh, we will initiate a dis discussion on failure mode effect and criticality analysis also. Um, let us uh, see that uh, probably first I will say uh, because it will be interesting to show that uh, you know we had this uh, uh, life cycle uh, life cycle curve which, which was called Bartov curve in which the initially the, the uh, pro, uh, uh, probability density function uh, it was uh, the drop was uh, you know very uh, sharp and then finally uh, maybe uh, in terms of uh, so let's say one year, two year, six month, whatever depends on the type of component or industry we are uh, using it or for system we are trying to reflect on um, uh, useful period will come. So first it will be uh, early period or infant mortality period, fail, uh, uh, failures will be very high. They will reduce over a short period of time uh, compared to let's say 0.1% of the uh, useful period. And then um, then you will see that the component or system has entered into the useful period. You know, And then uh, that uh, line will be that is uh, probability uh, uh, this uh, PDF, probability density function, it will show our hazard function, it will show a straight line actually, you know, and that um, then uh, we'll have um, late aging period. Um, 
for again it depends on which component for, for mechanical component it will be 20 to 30 years for electronic component it will be 10 5 to 10 to 15 years uh, and then after that aging period uh, starts so um, uh, so we know one term uh, here uh, that is uh, probability density function and then we have on the uh, x axis the time and we can see uh, this beta factor when the trend is like this the uh, in the uh, model itself that is in uh, Weibull model if you put beta is equal to 1 it will get converted into the exponential distribution if it is beta is equal to uh, uh, more than 1 3 or 4 uh, it will look like a normal or log normal distribution so we have information about that we can on the same uh, FTT graph we can show uh, in short all the three phases of uh, the uh, bot tough curve okay uh, so this is the beauty of this uh, viable distribution and so basically it accommodates the life cycle understanding of life, life cycle of the component and the way you vary the load or you know uh, design and all this curve will make a little change and then finally it will enter into the use, useful period region um, what what useful period is a reason uh, it says is all the quality related issues have been resolved the learning related issues have been resolved and now the the component has entered uh, into a uh, constant failure rate reason actually okay uh, now um, uh, as I said uh, that you know uh, FMEA, C, FMME CA it provides the holistic um, uh, approach because it, uh, it answers um, um, mode of failure it answers mechanism of a failure it answers effect of failure at local level or at wider level or at card level or at plant level so uh, and then recovery mechanism also it accommodated but in laboratory environment that is not required it is required then criticality of the failure also is characterized and uh, so uh, so uh, only um, weakness of this approach is uh, they work in a isolation mode for a board or a component uh, but then uh, let's say uh, if I have to model common cause failure I cannot do that actually how crosstalk is happening between two channels uh, that is uh, uh, difficult uh, and uh, it cannot accommodate software failure so software failures you have to do because we are in the era of digital system so software has to be addressed in one way or the other either conservatively or you know realistic data whatever limited data we have on this and nowadays international organizations they are developing this uh, uh, digital system reliability module taxonomy and all those things have been developed and there is a lot of good progress has happened actually now um, uh, this uh, it is very easy to reflect the loading as well as physical physical parameters uh, on the viable distribution uh, elegantly and their impact on the uh, this thing and uh, the central figure is time to failure modeling okay and that um, if you compare with the traditional approach um, uh, it is essentially not failure rate as i was i've been telling uh, repeatedly it is a mechanism oriented uh, research or you know modeling that that we do here so uh, that uh, uh, though we though um, from this slide the my conclusion is that even though it is not a widespread use method but in all the corners uh, wherever reliability is actively being pursued POIF is an important component and uh, there for, especially for component which are new which are not in, in the mill handbook or the design which is so specific the only PF, uh, POIF approach uh, provides the answer actually. So um, now what is the basic features of POIF approach if you want to I want to see uh, systematically and uh, uh, list it so first it is science based because we start for on uh, uh, start from the first principle of science uh, how temperature affects uh, my failure rate how loading affects in terms of cyclic loading or whatever it could be thermal loading it could be mechanical loading and all and for this experiments are uh, performed in the laboratories and then we come to some conclusion now that means reliability has with the POF it, we have entered into microscopic level range and which is a very good sign because uh, in probabilistic or in statistical approach uh, for whatever reason you might call uh, we were always had more question uh, uh, when we solved one problem so you solve one problem you have more question common cause failure you came to uh, characterize uh, uh, you know uh, through a empirical formula but we always felt whether it is correct 
or whether it is over, uh, conservative. Uh, so uh, then if physics of failure approach is there and if, say, let us say uh, on an electronic contact, if oxide formation is one of the issue, then I do experiment in the laboratory and how oxide formation uh, affects my uh, switches or connectors reliability and then from there I can generate my own specification okay, this oxide formation is causing uh, increase in resistance, yeah, it is in milli ohm actually, uh, increase in resistance and that can be handled by uh, just putting, uh, pulling out and putting in the same connector again so that the, the oxide layer goes off and again you have renewed your system for, these are very, uh, so an era of physics of failure has started wherein the problems have been solved with lot of great difficulties, uh, life testing, then anal analyzing that kind of thickness which was, which was there even though all the connectors are gold plated. But then still the oxide is a phenomena which, uh, which happens with the kind of air quality you are using, the temperature you are maintaining, the degradation is taking place between the contacts. So, so th this can be solved very easily uh, while having a basic understanding of the uh, uh, failure and then you are giving time to failure, two and a half hour the, uh, the uh, components are not going to fail. So in a staggered way you can uh, find a solution. For mechanical failure, again it is physics of failure, we can call it as a uh, mechanics of failure and we can use a maker range uh, like finite element, element modeling level and all and we can understand why the component was failing, what were the stress level at, uh, at certain location which are critical in nature where the brakes or uh, uh, break uh, you know uh, leakages were happening or whatever. So that can be done actually and then uh, physics of failure approach. Uh, it provides a virtual testing ground, modeling and testing ground. That means before the design, uh, uh, conceptual design started, we can model all these things and it, we can give a support to design also. So that by the time the, uh, the board is developed, my uh, reliability model is uh, ready and then I can use this input for, uh, input for my further testing of the component in accelerated mode and all that. So this is the thing. Now if I compare really point to point, uh, I have not covered all the points but few points which are very important when we go for reliability modeling. So you have statistic, statistical or probabilistic approach and POF based approach. So uh, reliability expectation here we get failure rate okay? and uh, here we get time to failure. And uh, as far as the uh, uh, item number two that is the matrix is there, it is mean time between failure but here it is a uh, MFOP, maintenance free operating period. That means we are not expecting those failures because we, with the live testing and all, uh, considering that the loading condition was meeting the um, uh, environment uh, which is there in application or industrial environment. And then second uh, matrix was failure free operating period. How much failure free operating period for a given uh, confidence level. So uh, here we have failure, uh, mean time to failure, failure rate. Uh, and here we have this MFOP and FFOP. And then then uh, consideration for failure. So uh, here uh, we were uh, distribution means random failure we, we used to call. That means we have done away with the epistemic component which is not correct. With all the data epistemic com component was also there. So uh, ideali idealization of random failure uh, was not appropriate here but here uh, we, have, we are giving the reason or even if the reason is not available, um, we try to reach the aleatory reason that means beyond that uh, uncertainty cannot be reduced. So we are on more or uh, better, better ground as far as the um, uh, POF methods is concerned uh, and the last one is applicability. This uh, applicability is uh, there in the um, statistical approach, it is widely accepted uh, method as on today. Uh, but here uh, we, we are focusing on product or unit but here we have a systems approach. So this I would say uh, has an advantage uh, because with a, uh, relatively lesser effort we are covering but then once uh, advanced uh, softwares are available probably even here the way we require for risk assessment a huge software uh, you know uh, commercial software. Similarly here also for PAF in the coming time the softwares will be available and uh, we will integrate individual electronic component into the board, board into system, system into plant and all that actually. So um, 
what is the POF flowchart for reliability? The first input, so we have to understand how step by step this uh, procedure is executed for a, implementing a POF. First is input data. Input data includes design data, uh, you know, physical uh, data, loading data, and uh, uh, what are the duty cycle uh, of this uh, component. So, because duty cycle is a one of the uh, one of the cr critical factor in uh, assessing the reliability of the component. Okay, and then second module is uh, failure mode and effect analysis. So, uh, uh, having this information available, we do failure mode, effect, and criticality analysis. Um, and next step is accelerator. Whatever mechanisms that are uh, to be modeled and uh, the formulations are available, we, we are okay. Uh, but then if they are not available, then accelerated testing is, even if they are available for confirming them, we do the accelerated test. So accelerated, accelerated testing is a, uh, is a component which will remain in physics of failure method. And then finally, we time to give uh, time to failure. Uh, and then finally, again we, again we join in loop into FM, FMM CA and uh, we will we'll give, uh, we will go downward the remaining steps uh, which calls compliance target. So uh, whether we are meeting those target, if we are meeting the target, then uh, if we are, okay, but if we are not meeting the target, then as you saw the, in the flow chart, uh, we will go back to the re re redesign. Final reliability estimates will give and system level integration will happen. So here again, POF model relates uh, time to failure with construction features. Construction feature means strength in, uh, indirectly. That means kind of strength that is, so again we come back to the same uh, structural modeling that is stress strength modeling uh, uh, here for giving the time to failure. So stress and resilience, resilience means uh, strength. And uh, considering various loading factor which is the uh, stress inducer in the, into the system. And it could be, the stresses could be uh, temperature, uh, humidity, electrical parameter, voltage, current, uh, uh, power, mechanical parameters, good vibration, torque and all. And some of the uh, widely used failure models are discussed below. Um, more models and their relevance can be found in literature. Okay. Now, failure mode and effect and criticality analysis. So, here uh, the effect goes on ki your FMEA quality will depend on the understanding of life cycle loads. This includes the routine, temperature, pressure, um, you know, humidity, uh, dusting. Uh, apart from that, it might include seismic load, one time load, you know. So, our flooding uh, characteristic. So, uh, all these things should go into the life cycle um, uh, loading into the uh, system. Okay. We know that we do all the provisions, whether it is location uh, factor, whether it is separation factor, whether it is isolation factor, uh, high elevation, low elevation, all those, um, you know. But then still, um, the component has to see sometimes the harsh environment and that one cycle of harsh environment, it should not take it to the failure state and in failure state also, it should not go to unsafe state. Any component uh, can fail in safe state, that means, let's say a switch fail to open, fail to open, it was supposed to open and actuate some device, it did not open, fail to close, the circuit reliability is poor. So one is causing the reliability, other one is calling the unsafe failure. So uh, prioritization, when we do the pri in criticality analysis, we do those prioritization and the risk component takes the, uh, you know, superseding or, you know, it supersedes other kind of factors actually. Then, uh, uh, as I said, the criticality number, uh, okay, priority number we can say. So those comes into the pressure, where, where, where it comes from, criticality and severity of the terms, you know. And then risk significant quotient uh, uh, comes into the picture from the here. So we are coming from top and we are coming to risk significant. Uh, have, uh, so there we understand the product design, qualification, testing and root cause, if any issue is there, uh, and prognostics. So we prognose there whatever parameter it is, uh, reliability, time to failure, or we try to understand the uncertainty. Uh, so this chart uh, is, uh, FME uh, chart is here, define the parameter, identify the potential mode of failure, potential uh, causes of uh, uh, failure, then identify failure mechanism, failure mechanism, and then identify and prioritize them so that we can use it in plant management. So um, basically there are, um, 
major uh, six steps in, uh, in the FMECA and uh, uh, sometimes we are calling FMEA, FMMEA, FMEA, FMEA, FMECA but all, all it means is what you require. So FMECA is the full scale or you know uh, which we used 90% uh, in our physics of failure approach. So system definition we understand that and then we have uh, evaluation of uh, various failure modes. I said one component can have more than one failure mode, fail to open, uh, fail to close, short circuit, short open, uh, then uh, uh, you know uh, leakages, okay. So uh, many modes. So which mode is important for us and for that what is the mechanism. So identify the life cycle load for that particular thing. Uh, what are the loading condition, assessment of failure causes, and then identification of failure mechanism, uh, failure models, uh, very critical uh, this thing. So this will provide the answer for the time to failure. So this is all uh, in short and it is a recursive process. You start from the failure mode effect and again critical analysis, again come back to uh, critical analysis uh, and like that you evolve into the system and you come to the final system. So one simple example of uh, FME, FMME, CA table, you know. So first is you are having a component because this type of approaches they are available at component level. Let us say I had in question um, one new aluminum electrolytic capacitor I have bought and uh, I, I don't have much information. Even if I have some information I want to do priori like Bayesian priori and updating it through my experience. So I use physics of failure uh, approach. Uh, wherein FMEA is the central part, then we talk what is the system boundary. It is very important to uh, give the system boundary so that we are focused in our uh, analysis up to that only. So we have a capacitor, solder joints and uh, cooling arrangement. This is the boundary actually. And then design rule for quality, we got some million book, mill 217 screening we have used for this capacitor and then only it got inducted into our system. Uh, then failure modes and uh, causes. So uh, drop in electrolytic level. This was the first uh, uh, visual mode that was available to us and failure mechanism is uh, increase in ESR, electro uh, equivalent series resistance. Uh, that was the something which was available to us on periodic checking uh, and then effect on the system, power supply module, erratic functions, you know, and then so that means it is it is uh, electrolytic capacitor is a part of power supply module and there are some electric functions. So that means we are giving at higher level also what are the effect. Then frequency of occurrence, it is a moderate frequency of uh, In fact, uh, after solder joint, um, interconnects and uh, uh, capacitor is one of the important component in the system uh, which uh, especially in power electronics, uh, it, uh, it really uh, causes uh, troubles to us and uh, the potential of it is on the unsafe side if it ruptures. Uh, it gets into the fire kind, kind of initiates fire also. So this is, that's why very people are very particular about the capacitor which is with aluminum electrolytic capacitors. So detection ra rating high. Uh, so uh, detection rating means how easily you can detect these failures. So uh, it is, it's pos possible to detect this. Precursor to the failure, equivalent series resistance. The slow increase in equivalent series resistance, if we ignore this, if we don't monitor this, we end up into the failure uh, and the other was in leakage sign, drop in electrolytic level, these two we have to monitor and severity rating, very low severity rating uh, and then criticality number is 3.3 to minus 3 and finally this is for remark. So uh, how FMECA can be performed, uh, this uh, table is available and for a electronic board there will be hundreds of the components there and then we'll have a list of high ranking, low ranking. So what you will do is a prioritization of the component which are uh, having a high risk or reliability rating and then accordingly we focus our, all our diagnostics development and all on those limited 20% components. So here we saw um, physics of failure, FMEA discussion, how uh, FMEA is playing a uh, central role in uh, FMEA, uh, in physics of failure. Uh, what are the life cycle load? Uh, it could be uh, it could be uh, operational uh, load. It could be one time load. But uh, if we do not factor in those loads, uh, then our design may not be lasting, uh, and it will not serve its purpose. Uh, we we discuss through FMEA CA table uh, how uh, how this uh, strategy works. Um, and then uh, the whole effort goes into the um, understanding of the mechanism. So we are we have uh, electromigration, time-dependent dielectric breakdown, 
uh, then hot carrier injection and then uh, forty uh, and this kind of uh, so all those things we'll study in the next lecture. So now we'll be focusing on as I told you uh, the uh, POF is not component based. It is basically uh, mechani mechanism based approach where we'll try we try to understand the time to failure. Thank you. We'll meet you in the next lecture.